This video will be a short introduction on how to use X-Foil to predict the performance of most uh, common subsonic airfoil shapes. I'll show you both the inviscid and viscous uh, analysis modes of the program and, and really give you better insight into how a lot of these airfoil polars get selected. Now, this airfoiltools.com website that we're starting out with is hopefully familiar to most of you in the class right now. You see most of these polars that it generates for different airfoils. Uh, these may not be the best examples in the world, but at low Reynolds numbers at least. You see they're all based on X-Foil predictions. In fact, uh, airfoiltools.com goes through its technique and assumptions and everything else that it, it uses to run these codes. But we can actually download the XFOIL software and if I can get it back up, there we go, and run these type of uh, codes ourselves. This software is available through Mark Drela's MIT personal webpage. It's free, uh, command line based, and a lot of you know, modern UAS design, a lot of other uh, more GUI based software programs in the modern world are based on this framework. So it's really, really uh, been a great tool for open source aerospace and, and honestly probably a lot of real high-end vehicles that are, are built using XFOIL data. The biggest thing you can use right off the bat is to know that the question mark automatically repeats all the possible commands for the menu you're in. There are four possible menus, operations, uh, complex mapping design, queue design, and graphical design. Operation mode is where you'll be if you're running an analysis on an airfoil. Uh, complex mapping design is if you want to do inverse design, I think based there on uh, translating pressures into full. Well, I honestly haven't used it much. Q design is where you're looking at velocities and dynamic pressures, CPs, uh, actually modifying the geometric shape of an airfoil based on its uh, surface pressures. It's an inverse design method. And G design is where you can actually modify the shape of an airfoil, uh, apply flaps, change thickness, really just tweak its, its geometry directly. Or honestly, I use it most commonly just to look at what the airfoil uh, looks like. So I make sure it is imported correctly. Conveniently, we can just load in simple NACA foils by just typing in, for example, NACA2412. That is one of the commands listed right there underneath load. So four digit, five digit airfoils uh, sets it to the input. So the 2412, max thickness 12%, max camber uh, 2%. X locations, as you would expect, with 12% maximum thickness. Uh, and we can actually just type in G design, and it'll open up a second window where we can see the graphic depiction of a 2412 airfoil. Now, this is actually represented by points. Uh, if you want to look back in airfoil tools, you see each one of the airfoil pages has this text readout of all the different coordinates that make up an airfoil. This is the top surface and bottom surface of an airfoil expressed in points. If I wanted to temporarily open up a typical, for example, a 7062 aircraft.dat file, which is really just a text file with a different extension. You see it goes from, so your one, zero would be X and Y coordinates. So that's the trailing edge top surface. It goes all the way up here to kind of the zero, zero point without actually passing directly through it, interestingly enough. And then covers the bottom surface of the airfoil down here. Now notice this is only, I don't know, I'd guess 50 to 70 points. Uh, some of these files may have a few hundred. You can interpolate airfoil files. Some are better suited for operations in XFOIL than others. So uh, your mileage may vary depending on where and when and who made the DAT file, etc. So if it just doesn't seem to be working at all, maybe just try a different airfoil file. Maybe try a different condition for uh, numeric input. Sometimes they just don't work wonderfully. But it is important that it starts at the back top surface and continually goes forward around the front leading edge and terminates again at the back trailing edge, noticing that this is just ever so slightly a different point than the front. <coughs> so to walk through X foil, let's go back to the main operations menu. We have the 2412 loaded in this second graphical menu. Let's go and run a simple thing in operations. So notice it now trans changes to oper I. And that means operations mode in inviscid circumstance. So we can say, well, what, what operations can we even run? Here's a big long list. Um, alpha is pretty much the most common one. You can prescribe a CL and it'll iteratively solve for it. But let's keep it simple to say alpha, which is A. It'll ask you what angle of attack you want. Let's do positive five degrees. Press enter and it immediately solves for it. You get a cool looking plot. Coefficient of pressure versus uh, chord position. The negative CPs, which are on the positive side of the axis because these plots are typically inverted. Uh, actually indicate higher velocities, lower pressures on the foil, and lift generation. Uh, the reason they're inverted kind of makes sense in this plot because you're usually more interested in what's happening on the top surface than the bottom, and it kind of shows that lift. If you integrate these two curves, you get kind of the net lift force generated. 
So at alpha of 5 degrees, CL, you get 0.8579. CM of whatever in CD, you can read it off. Notice it's CDP, the profile drag. You'll understand that more once you talk about drag in class. But that uh, indicates what's going on. Let's actually break this now. So press A again to do an alpha check. And let's go to something crazy. 40 degrees angle of attack. Any real airfoil under a real circumstance will stall and not really work well. Uh, but this calculation says it's fine. So how can this be a good program if it says we reach a CL of 4.64 at 40 degrees and there's no separation, all the flow is happy? That's because right now we're in inviscid mode. Inviscid means that there's no visco viscous boundary layer. There's no possibility of separation. You can, in fact, do alpha of, I think, 85 degrees, and it still says everything's good to go at a CL of 6.92. Obviously, that's ridiculously broken. Uh, now, inviscid it has its somewhat of its uses, but it's so absolutely easy to turn on viscous mode in this program that that's the extent of the time I'm going to dedicate to inviscid calculations. Just suffice to say, they will lie to you. And if you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, you will never know the difference. Let's turn on V for viscous mode. It asks us Reynolds number, certainly a number you should be familiar with in the class already. Let's do a Reynolds number of 250,000. Uh, notice it automatically assumes that Mach number is still zero. We can do the same thing. Noting that it now says Oper V for viscous mode of operation. Let's do alpha of five degrees. It looks the same except now we now have a dotted line and a yellow line and a cyan line here on the right-hand screen. The dotted line represents the inviscid solution. Uh, it should look exactly the same as the shape we just had up there. The yellow line and blue line are the top and bottom boundary layer extents respectively. Uh, yellow and blue down here graphically kind of show the boundary layer height. Uh, and you can see that really it's thickening up significantly as it goes towards uh, the back of the airfoil. Now this is a bit more realistic because what if we type in alpha equals 10? Well, you'll see, well, we'll get back to the not, big red knot conversion in a minute, but you see overall that it, the back side of the airfoil uh, has a thicker boundary layer starting to indicate that um, it's reaching its performance limit. Let's run that command again. The semi-converge, you see it just kind of numerically became happy. Nothing significantly changed graphically. But this is kind of what you'd expect. The battery is very thin at the front, and as you hit the adverse pressure gradient portion, it's thicker and thicker and thicker until it kind of separates, starts growing, and you might get some recirculation to a, at a higher value. Let's keep pushing it. This was alpha of 10. Let's do alpha of 14. Not converged. Ran it again. It uh, converged there. Let's see your seal of 1.32. Was that higher than 10? I don't even remember. So you can continue doing this by hand. Alpha of 16. Okay, so it's actually going down now. Alpha of 12. Looking here at the CL, 1.25, alpha of 10, 1.16. Let's go, so let's go back up, alpha of 13. Oh, not converged, run it again. I'm pressing the up arrow and enter. Uh, so 1.29, okay, that's pretty good. Alpha of 14, was that actually the max? Maybe it is, 1.32, can we beat it? Alpha of 15, you're our only hope. Oh, it goes down. So, okay, alpha of 14 is the peak CL. But obviously this would be very tedious if we had to do this every single time. So there's another command. If you go back here to the command list, question mark, enter. That's how I got that. You should be able to use alpha sequence. Or you can also do a CL sequence if you care to. Uh, there are a lot of toys to play around through in this menu. We won't cover them all. But alpha sequence is pretty handy. So A, S, E, Q. Okay, first alpha value. Let's start at zero. Last alpha value. Well, let's go to uh, 15. Because we know that's just past stall. And alpha increment. Let's do every degree. And so it keeps running and running and running. And obviously some of these have failed. Uh, these CP contours don't make any sense. It stops showing you the colored uh, viscous boundary layers. So we have a problem. <coughs> if, 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 if it's not able to converge in, I think, the natural limit of 10 steps, 10 iterations, it just says, okay, fine, I give up and goes on. So let's change that limit. If we go to our commands, we see there's a command called iter up here at the very top. I-T-E-R. Enter new, enter new iteration limit. Let's actually take this up to maybe 400. This code was written, computers were uh, considerably slower than what we have now. So it might have, you know, 10 iterations could have taken much longer than the milliseconds required to solve in this case. So let's run that alpha sequence again from zero to 15 in steps of one degree. Now it looks like every one of those polars looks smooth and as expected, and this data would be great, except that it's only shown in the graph. We could take a screenshot and type that into Excel ourselves, but that seems kind of silly when we have this giant numeric program running all these calculations and what we have to do data output by hand. Well, certainly not. Certainly that's not how you have to do it, and no, it's not. 
question mark to look at our commands. And there's one in here I want to look for called polar accumulation. P A C C I think is what it's called. But I want to confirm. P A C C toggle auto point accumulation to active polar. Let me delete the old file from an old example. Pack. And so this is polar one newly created for accumulation. Okay, thanks. Airfoil archived with polar NACA 2412. Enter polar save file name or return for no file. Uh, I'm going to lovingly call this example.txt. Uh, polar dump file name. Uh, I typically don't save the dump file, so say OK. And then now we can actually run the alpha sequence again. In fact, you should be able to press up. There it is. Alpha sequence 0 to 15 in steps of 1. Press enter. It recalculates those, except now in the directory that XFOIL was running in, I should have an example.txt file. In fact, there it is. Calculated polar for NACA 2412, Reynolds number fixed. It tells you the Reynolds number we're at, 250K. Mach number calculated at, and here is all the output data for your airfoil. Alpha is angle of attack, CL is coefficient of lift, coefficient of drag, profile coefficient of drag. Noticing that those are a little bit different. Uh, there's pressure and viscous forces attached to each, and so there's going to be a lot more discussion of CD and CDP further on in the class. Coefficient of moment uh, plays a bigger role in flight mechanics, but now just kind of keep track. You can you know what negative and positive coefficient of moments mean. And this one's kind of interesting at the end. We talked a lot about boundary layer transition, how the top boundary layer is really what you should be focusing on. So XTR, top transition. So this means at zero degrees alpha, the top boundary layer is transitioning at 81-ish percent of the cord. And then notice the transition was creeping forward and forward and forward and forward until really it starts transitioning basically at the leading edge uh, these last several runs that it did. But the bottom seems totally happy. And that makes sense. Because as you go up an angle of attack... Uh, the bottom battery layer becomes more and more stable. So it continually kind of accelerates across the entire flow. You get a favorable pressure gradient. Uh, instability does not develop, so the transition for the bottom battery layer stays perfectly content all the way to the back surface, and that's not uncommon at all. But that's a very, very simple inbuilt NACA foil. What if we want to do something a bit more exotic, I'll call it. So notice we're back at the top level menu of XFOIL. If you want to exit menus, I'll go back into OPER. Just press ENTER, and it goes up a level. In fact, I just mash enter a bunch of times, and unless you type quit, it's not going to close the program. Let's import a, a polar file I've already downloaded called sd7062.dat. It's just a text file with those points off Airfoil Tools, and I made sure they're arranged in the proper order. Uh, again, from top surface of the trailing edge, flowing around the leading edge, ending at the bottom surface trailing edge. So let's just say load, and I'll look at my file name, sd7062.dat. Now, the easiest way to do this load is if that file exists in the exact same folder that you've downloaded XFOIL into. You know, don't put them in subfolders. Don't put them in a higher folder. They're, if you're comfy with command line operations, you certainly know how to get around this with uh, other things. But it is loaded in and look for it to say successful. If you want to confirm that you've successfully loaded an airfoil in, type G design. And there we go. That is the Sealy Donovan 7062 airfoil, a very good foil, uh, shown in the graphical design mode. So let's uh, not play any, anything with that right now. Go to Opera. We're still, I think, at Reynolds number 250,000. Um, oh, Polar is being accumulated. Cannot change its parameters midstream. Okay, so let's turn off Polar Accumulation. Hopefully you can just turn it right. Yep, there we go. Okay, just type it in again. Polar Accumulation disabled. Reynolds number. Let's go lower, 150,000. Alpha 5, converged. Our iteration limit should be plenty high. Yeah, presently 400. Yep, sounds good. Uh, so yeah, this is how you do it. This is now a custom airfoil that XFOIL couldn't generate on its own. We downloaded a DAT file. And we're running analysis on it. Alpha sequence from 5 to 15 in steps of 2. Uh, let's think about a few of those spots. Okay. But you can see here that, oh, 13 failed. Hard. It uh, looks like, well, let's run that again to make sure 13 still functions. Alpha of 13. Yeah, okay, it's it's fine. But the CL is considerably higher. So this 7062 outperforms the 2412 uh, at higher lift coefficients in terms of lift generation capability. It'd be nice to look at a polar, and you can certainly do that in the software, but there are some other GUIs that go over the top of this code, use its physics-based engine, but uh, make accessing... Uh, some of the airfoil data a lot easier, and we'll cover those later on. So, 
Uh, that's how you do the 7062. The last thing I want to show you is in graphical design, you can actually go in and start modifying shapes. The most useful shape mod you can do is to add a flap. Now you just type in flap. It's one of the commands here in the list in the G Design menu. And it goes through kind of a series of question and answer. The flap hinge X location. All right, so I want that at 80% of the chord, 0 0.8. The Y location. I could either enter in the actual percent height or a coordinate height, but it's easier to say 999 and then enter a fraction. I want to hinge halfway up the chord length. Then lastly, deflection. Uh, let's do 20 degrees down. So now it's kind of weird. You have a purple airfoil with a flap deflection we just described and a white airfoil without it. The purple one is known as what's called the buffer airfoil. It's where you're doing your work. If you can do several modifications at once, you can keep moving things. You can do flap deflections on top of flap deflections, uh, knowing that you're not doing Fowler flaps. There are no slots. It's a continual, continuous single outer surface shape. Uh, but you can still do crazy modifications. You can increase thickness. You can increase camber. You can, you can control the shape fairly directly. If you want to copy that buffer airfoil into your main working airfoil, just type X. It's for execute. And then it says current airfoil nodes set from buffer airfoil nodes. You say, all right. It doesn't really show anything graphically changing. But if you go back into G Design, you see that it actually did save the shape and things are good to go. So let's exit that. Go to Opera. Run this at alpha of 5 degrees. It's still viscous. Uh, and while that looks quite odd, you see it actually kind of worked. Here's what's interesting in the bottom. You can actually see that boundary. They're really getting thick on the top of the flap. Seals very high, 1.61 for that deflection. You can see it kind of thickens and then thins back out in terms of boundary layer thickness there at the at the uh, concave portion. So it's a really, really powerful tool. Uh, to really put the icing on the cake, I think it's F MOM, flap moment, or let me find the menu. Yes, F M O M, calculate flap hinge moment and forces. That's very useful for calculating servo torques and required forces there. So F M O M. And there you go, flap hinge X and Y location. There it is, that's what we just designed. But it actually gives you non-dimensional coefficients that allow you to determine the X force and Y force. That'd be the uh, axial and, and, or I guess the directional force generated by the flap. But the most important thing is hinge moment. It's actually integrating pressures over that flap to determine the hinge moment that happens at the, the rotation axis you specified. Notice again, there's dynamic pressure, some chord length non-dimensionalization, and the coefficient out front that lets, makes it specific to this implementation. So that is how you size servos, actuators, etc. Really a pretty good way of doing it. Uh, you'd, you'd be hard pressed and do a lot more complex calculation to come up with a better number than that. So that is the first walkthrough of XFOIL. Hopefully this helps going through a lot of your homework. We've loaded up basic NACA foils. We've loaded up a custom foil downloaded from airfoiltools.com. Uh, I didn't necessarily show modifying all those coordinate points, but I've, we've covered the format required to bring things in. And lastly, we showed how to modify even a custom airfoil with flap deflections, run that both in inviscid and viscous modes, accumulate polars. And what's cool about this is now that you've seen the guts of how these codes work, you'll soon find ways of running a whole lot of studies, large batch operations, in a very graphical, much easier to use environment. But it's important to start here where the, where the uh, calculations are performed.